Fian Lopez. Uh, my nickname on Drupal.org is Peñasquito. Uh, and I work for uh, Lingotech. And uh, I'm going to, to talk a bit about the new features about uh, building multilingual websites with Drupal 8 and how it's really easier than in the past to build uh, multilingual websites. So as I said, I work for Lingotech, uh, and I've been involved in Drupal 8 development, um, mostly on the Drupal multilingual initiative led by Gabor Holzin. And uh, what we are going to talk about is uh, about the challenges <coughs> about building uh, multilingual websites, uh, how can we approach them, uh, how it used to be in Drupal 7, how it will be with uh, once Drupal 8 is releasing a couple of weeks. And I will show uh, a little bit about how you can build on top of that uh, for, for uh, interacting with multilingual uh, content. And I will talk a little bit about what we do at Lingotech. So first thing is uh, the challenge is uh, most international organizations or even uh, national organizations like in Belgium where you have three official languages, you need to have content in different languages and you have several sources of, of content. It can be websites, pages on a website, documents, your software or whatever for your target, target audiences and your content is constantly changing, so you need to keep uh, up to date with uh, those change. And there are uh, different legacy tools and process for managing these translations, and we will see how, how this can be improved. So usually translations lag behind the, the rate of this content creation. So one of the solutions in Drupal 7, we built a module that uh, helps you to uh, to configure your multilingual websites uh, and also connects with our translation professional services. But if you don't, if you only want to to configure your website, it's totally fine to use it. It's for free, and it helps you to to do that. And yeah, so in terms of Drupal seven, wh why we need it? Uh, a tool for making easier uh, building uh, Drupal 7 multilingual websites. The thing is that uh, the Drupal 7 didn't really consider uh, multilingual in core, so we had a few uh, parts of the keys that we need for building multilingual websites, but not everything. So there are things that are not translatable in core, and English was considered like the only source language. So when you translate a, uh, a content, an note or whatever, your source is always the English uh, source, if any, and you cannot uh, change that. And if you are, build, so if you have uh, several contents, you may want to use content translation for translating that for translating this content, then you want to translate uh, the interface and you need to download different uh, different uh, PO files from localized Drupal.org or whatever site you are using. Uh, <coughs> if you want to, then if you want to ta translate uh, taxonomy terms, you have the ION suite internationalization suite, which contains a lot of models for translating views, uh, panels, uh, taxonomy terms. Then uh, you need to translate your, if you want to use like uh, Drupal Commerce, that it's built in top on, of the entity API, then you need entity translation module, and now you have several uh, different ways of translating your content with content translation or entity translation. And if you want to translate your, your titles of your notes, you, not, you need the title module. So at the end, you end with like 40 or 50 modules only for uh, translating your website. Have you, been, have you experienced this before? 
who has worked on multilingual websites? So most of you. And probably you, you will recognize this, this pain. Like we have uh, a tons of models and it's really dangerous to, to mix everything and to confuse yourself. So one example of this is the taxonomies. So you can translate taxonomy terms with uh, IATN, or you can use entity translation, and both are active. Uh, you need to take, there are pros and cons on using one of the other one. So you need to really decide which one you want to use, and then you are missing, you are probably missing functionality from the other one. So it's, it's a hard decision and it's easy to, to make a wrong decision on this and you can lose a lot of time. <coughs> it's the same with menu translation. You, in some cases you want to translate your menus and leave your, uh, and leave your menu items are as, a, as a, a track without a language or sometimes you want a, a fixed language and have different menus for languages. So it's really difficult to, to get it right for at the first try. Another thing is if you are using uh, different modules like field collections, uh, they are really fragile to translate. So because they are not really integrated into, into they don't really have a language assigned. So it's really hard to, to translate. So one thing we try to do is making this easier by using the Lingotech module. In Drupal 8, hopefully uh, everything has changed a lot. Uh, thanks to a lot of people who have been uh, involved, mainly Gabor Hoitzi, the lead of the initiative of the Drupal 8 multilingual initiative. And 1,000, more than 1,300 contributors are track on, on the Drupal 8 multilingual uh, site. So in Drupal 8, we will have uh, four different pillars, uh, language, uh, which provides the base services for assigning language to your data. We will have the interface translation, which only cares about translating your interface. Uh, then we have a content translation, which is actually based on entity translation module in Drupal 7, not content translation module, which can be kind of confusing. <coughs> and then we have the config translation uh, module. So these are four different modules, and this is mostly all you will need to make a side uh, multilingual. So let's uh, see which features every of these uh, pilots have. Sorry. So the first one is the language uh, model, which provides services for, for assigning language to your data. Uh, and it's useful not only in multilingual sites, like if you have a single uh, language site, you, want, you may want to track which uh, language this data is on. So the first thing you will see is that uh, language is the first step in this. Who has tried Drupal 8 already? Not a lot of you. So language is the first step when you install Drupal 8, which is really cool. And but the way it detects from your browser which language uh, your browser prefer to use. So your user inter the user interface of uh, the installer will be on your own language from the start. So if you choose a, a different language, uh, everything will be in uh, in this language for the installation process. As you see on the menu there, you have already, uh, you are using Arabic here. 
So the another big uh, feature is la language assignment. So in Drupal 7, you could uh, uh, add a language to Node user aliases by default and terms and views. And now, and terms and now in Drupal 8, you can assign uh, language to almost everything. So you have nodes, user aliases, terms, views, site info. In some cases, the language is not visible on your interface, but it's going to use the current language you are visiting your site into. Uh, as a configuring how to set up languages is really easy. So now, uh, if you go to the content uh, language page, you can see your different content types your different entity types and the different bundles they have, and you can check which defaults it should use, and uh, if you should use, uh, if you sh should show the selector uh, before uh, on the creation page or not. And you have all your entities in the same page. Like in Drupal 7, you had to go one by one and check the multilingual settings. Now it's really easy to build with, with Drupal 8. And that's it. Uh, in terms of language visibility, there are a lot of, a lot of improvements. Like uh, blocks can show uh, or hide based on the language. Like we we have a context there. Like you can set the visibility settings for different types, and you can also uh, pick in which language you want to show or hide a given block. Uh, now that views in core, which is a really great thing, uh, views already has language filtering and, and features for content list. This is something that uh, works quite well. There's uh, still some bugs on it, but it's uh, in a very good shape already. And as views is in core and all the admin pages and all the Drupal built-in pages are converted to, build, to views, you can really customize them if you have a Drupal 8 site, so you can customize your, uh, like your, uh, let's say your content listing admin page, and you want to show only the, the content that is in the current language. This is something that it's really used, really easy to do, to change now. Language selection has improved a lot. So language selection means it's, how the <coughs> language of how the site should, which language the site should use when you access to it. Uh, and now it has a different, uh, most more detection and selection uh, ways of doing it. So, and you can configure them on the same page. Like you can make it based on the URL on a session parameter, or you can use a user setting, you can look from the browser and you can reorder them, and based on the order, uh, the language will be choose, chosen. Now the domains also, if you want to use different prefix or different domains per language, it's more uh, easy to configure, it's all on the same page. So there are a lot of uh, UX improvements for building multilingual websites. You also have like different browsers use uh, different language codes in some cases, so you can create your own mappings about uh, these uh, language codes that the browser send, how they map to Drupal languages. Or you can, you can also have like a different setting if you want, maybe you are uh, creating a Chinese website, but you only speak uh, English, you can set uh, that you want to see the admin pages in one concrete language that is not the language that the site is built with. So this is a really cool feature. Um, and yeah. And you also have a, a setting for your users so your users can set a default language too. 
Another feature that the language model has, or that, that the language pillar has, is that now that the transliteration model is in core, uh, it's not, its use is not really extended everywhere, but it's something cool is that it's in integrated with machine names, so you can create your content types using whatever character set you want, like you want to name your articles in Russian, then uh, it will be translated to ASCII code. And another feature is that in Drupal 6 or 7, uh, English was there. And if you want to, to build a site, which is mainly, let's say you want to, to make a site only in, in Flemish, uh, you cannot really remove English. You can only hide it, and it's uh, and sometimes it's really confusing having it there if you are not going to use it. So in Drupal 8 you can delete it, so you can build really like monolingual sites, but in a different non-English language. So summarizing, uh, you can delete English. The the select flexible selection of languages. Uh, block visibilities, block visibility improvement. You can hide and and show blocks uh, based on the language your page is on. Uh, you can integrate uh, language with views. You have a flexible configuration page. Uh, there's a wider assignment of language to your data, and it's the first thing in in the installer. Any question already? So the second pillar is uh, interface translation. In Drupal 7, uh, the locale module has the language uh, assignment stuff in there. And also the interface translation uh, was built in the same module. Now they are separate. So you can even have like, uh, you can have uh, data in a different language but your site maybe only have one, uh, one language on your interface. So it's really flexible in terms of what you want to achieve or not with your website. And uh, this, the interface translation, now it's in the locale module. It's called interface translation on your extend page. So the first thing is uh, translation, downloads and updates are integrated into Drupal 8 core. So before you had to install the l module, the l update module for upgrading your, your translations from localized Drupal.org. Now it's integrated with core and when you add a language, it will automatically pull the updates uh, from localized Drupal.org if you have the, the interface translation module active and and the update module uh, enabled too. Uh, translation uh, files location is centralized. So this is really cool uh, feature if you have like a uh, complex uh, staging uh, process or workflow. Like if you have a staging server and a production server and you don't want to directly download your translations uh, your interface translations in, in live, you want to check them first in staging, uh, you can now have this like in a different folder which can be uh, configurable and you can put that into JIT or whatever you use and then you can uh, like uh, test your translations in a staging, check if they are good and then uh, import them on, on live. So this is really cool if you have like a, a complex workflow for staging uh, your sites. So you can update your strings, your interface translations, but uh, most of the times you want to customize uh, some of them. Uh, and if you download or update from these translations, you are going to, to lose them because you are writing them. 
So one thing you can do is in Drupal 8 is that you can mark them as uh, custom, which means that if you update your translations, they won't be over overridden. So they are protected from community translation overrides if you are using localized Drupal.org. And another great thing is that if you are using some shared hosting, a cheap one or whatever, uh, the import will not time out because now the PO files are really in chunks. So this is a problem some sites have with if they had a very big PO files and they have a, a shared hosting or something, you won't see a, a white screen of death anymore. Uh, the interface for translations in Drupal uh, has been uh, improved a lot. So now you can search for your strings and you can filter by if they are customized or not. And whenever you change uh, anything, you have a change in the background, so it's easier to spot that you have uh, changed uh, translation and you didn't save them yet. Uh, there is a more better support for plurals. Um, uh, yeah, you can filter by translation, customize, customize it, translations or not. So it's, uh, I think it's really useful to, to use. And you have uh, one difference with Drupal 7 is that you have like in the right column, you always have uh, the language you are translating to in the title, which if you go for a coffee and come back, you could miss it. Now it's always there. So it's, it's easier to use. Sorry, can you do contextual translations? Like for example, the word order in English has two meanings if you translate it. Yeah. Uh, this depends on the... So this is something that it's already possible in Drupal 7. Yeah. The thing is that it's like somehow a hidden feature that and most people don't use. Yeah. Like you can uh, indicate a, a context in which a, a term is used. And then you can, in based on this context, you can have different translations. But the thing is that the developer which is introducing this word should call should add a context to the t function when they are calling it so if you find this kind of issues the better thing is to to fill an issue on the module with the problem if you find this in a country module So another good thing is translating to English. Uh, if you had uh, an English site uh, and you wanted to change some string in Drupal 7, there were several options, but all of them are uh, hacks somehow. Like you have the string overrides module, I think it's called. Like you can uh, change the strings. Uh, you can also uh, write these uh, strings on your settings PHP file in a specific uh, array, uh, but this means that you need to have uh, access to your physical files on your server. So in Drupal 8, this has improved a lot and now you can translate to English. This is something that it's not enabled by default because uh, it's uh, for, for some sites that don't really need it, can be like a performance. Uh, issue in terms that it it has a worse performance but it's not bad performance but if you need it you can go to your site uh, edit the English language and you see it's not applicable then interface translation so you have a mark there that is an enable interface translation and after that like you have uh, as any other language you have a mark and you can go to the translation page and translate, uh, change and a, stri a string for, for the English website. So if we are changing that, uh, login by s for using sign in. So when you go to the, to the home blog, which is not there anymore by default, by the way, 
uh, you have the sign in button there. So this is cool. So you can manage uh, English translation as anything, as any other language translation. So summarizing, we can translate to English now. We have a whole new interface for interface translation. Uh, custom translations are tracked now. Uh, we have a centralized file folder where you can put your uh, inter uh, translation files and you can uh, put them on into JIT or whatever you use. Uh, translations are downloaded automatically from Drupal.org, from localized Drupal.org if you want to. And now it's a separate module from the, from the language one. So the third pillar is content translation. Uh, so the good message is that all content entities are supported now in Drupal 8. What are content entities? So uh, in Drupal 8, we will have uh, most of the data is into the concept of entities. And we have several types on, of entities. So content entities are are nodes, user, comments, terms, for example, but there are a lot of more. So all of them are supported now with uh, Drupal 8 core translation. Uh, the, we have the integrated configuration, so it's really easy to set up. As I showed before in the language uh, pillar, we saw how you can say which uh, defaults you want to have for your different entities, and if you want to show the the language selector there or not in the creation page. So now, if you enable the content translation module and go to the same page, now you have uh, another column which is a translatable one. And if you check it, it, it will expand all the fields that this uh, entity has, and you can check which of them are translatable or not, so which one you want to translate or not. And it works also at the subfield level, so if you have an image with, with a file, the alternative text and the title, you want to only translate the uh, alternative text and the title, you can do that. And the files are not duplicated between different translations. So this is pretty cool. <coughs> and this works also for, for, like for all entities. So if you have a custom block, you can translate the, the body of it. So, uh, translation interface uh, has improved a lot too. Uh, now every, uh, when you enable uh, translations for a given uh, type, you will have a translation tab uh, in a, like in every different entity will look the same. Like you, you will have that everywhere. So if you click the translation tab, you will see the status of your translations the source language, which, which as we said, you can now, uh, it can be any translation, and you can perform operations there. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, and uh, in the case that you have a field which is not uh, translatable, and you go to the edit page of a translation, you will have a mark saying that this field is uh, the same for all the languages. And if you have the right permission, you can change it from this uh, very same page. So <coughs> another thing is, uh, as you may heard, uh, there is no upgrade path in Drupal 8, in terms that uh, in Drupal 7, you had a, a great PHP page where you can upgrade from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7, but it didn't really work that well because there are a lot of edge cases. And so in Drupal 8, what they decided is to, to include a migrate in core, which is the parallel session at the moment. It's talking about that. So now uh, you can also, the thing is that we want that you can migrate from Drup multilingual Drupal 6 sites to Drupal 8 or from multilingual Drupal 7 sites to Drupal 8, and this is something that is in the works. As migrate has been marked as experimental in Drupal core, 
it's going to be updated uh, constantly even when Drupal 8 is released. So this is something that there is a lot of people, there is some people working on that at, the, at, the, at this very moment. So it will be supported at some point. Uh, another improvement is that the core search and API and the core search and search API has language support now, so you can filter your, your search by language too. The same with the node access API, so you can give uh, different, uh, grant different permissions for different languages to different roles. So in terms of content translation, that's, these are the improvements. The no site access API support, the search, uh, search index are separate so you can filter by language. Uh, search APIs are updated too. It's available for all content entities. You can configure uh, translatability per bundle, per film, or per subfield. Uh, properties are translatable too. And there will be a migration path at some point. So the fourth pillar is the config translation model. Uh, and uh, the difference be between config, config and content in Drupal 7 is not clear. So in Drupal 8, they, they, there was the CMI initiative, which tried to make this uh, working with configuration more easy. And they have like a different format now. So as we say before, we have data on entities. Some of them are content, like node user comments or terms. <coughs> but there is also a lot of like different configurations. So uh, configuration entities are views, vocabularies, contact categories, or fields. But there is also other configuration that are not entities. So in some way, there are two different ways of handling configuration, but in, ter in terms of translation, there will be the same. And there, are, there is another group that is really special, like path aliases, which uh, ha has support <coughs> on its own on Drupal core. So if you use a content, if you are building a, your own module and you use content entities or configuration entities, it's really easy to provide uh, translatability capabilities to your entities. But if you don't use those, you, you are on your own in terms of the API. So it will be harder for you to integrate with multilingual sites. So uh, one thing is that we have a language assigned to uh, your configuration files or your configuration objects. So you will have uh, the ability to, you can know which uh, language this configuration is in, which is cool because if you have a strings there, you, you will be able of translating them. Uh, another thing is that in some cases you want to change your, your config values by language and uh, you can have now language overrides and it's a store in the same way than config, so you have everything together, which is easier to track. And for ship configuration, uh, translation is the same than uh, interface translation. So if you want to translate the website feedback, you just have to go to the user interface translation and you will have find it there. So you translate that to a Hungarian and you save it. You will find that your configuration has changed there. So your contact form now has the title in, in Hungarian. Uh, configuration will be integrated with localized Drupal.org. So if you have uh, like Drupal comes with shipped configuration and you want to have that in your language. Uh, it will be available on localized Drupal.org for translation. So if you download the community translation, you will include that with your download. And uh, as we say this for any configuration, so if you have a blog 
and you want to translate its, its description or title or whatever, you will have it there. And the interface is as in, in the content ones, so it's really easy to, to use. <coughs> so there we will uh, translate our site name to a different language and yeah, it's the same. We will have the translate tab which we can use. So uh, summarizing, uh, config translation, uh, it's a full translation module in terms that it supports all kind of configuration uh, objects or entities and you can translate them in the same way with the standard translation tabs. Uh, you can provide config overrides per language uh, and it works for any configuration and you can also translate the shipped uh, configuration. So these are the four pilar pillars of language and multilingual support in Drupal 8. If you want to get involved, uh, there's, there's a website which contains some information about what uh, th there is a lot of information about the different talks and workshops that there are given around the world and you can find there like online uh, workshops that you can do at home if you want to if you if you want to com contribute to to the multilingual initiative there's a, a contribute section there where you can find which uh, issues are being working on and you can help there. Uh, we meet every Wednesday on IRC if you want to join. And if you want to keep up to date, you can use Twitter. And now that Drupal 8 will be released, is like the right time for going to localize Drupal.org and help with contributing translations. So uh, a good thing of, of, uh, of the multilingual initiative in Drupal 8 is that uh, if you are uh, an integrator like uh, Lingotech uh, <coughs> are, uh, we had to support, if we wanted to provide translations, we have to support a very uh, spare uh, set of possible configurations. Now with, with Drupal 8, it's really easy to build on top of that. So it's uh, really easy to make a model that integrates well with, with uh, with Drupal 8. So we already have a module which is working for Drupal 8. We are working on it now. Um, we have a trans translation tab that has a dashboard about the different languages that you have, the different locales that you have, the status of your content. And you can also configure uh, uh, the different fields that you want to bloat for translation to our service. And you have a, like a, a panel where you have all your content and you can use uh, uh, bulk management pages for translating different contents at, one, at once. So if you have a node and you check, uh, you can upload it and get an automatic translation. This is really useful. We provide this for free, automatic translation for free in case you want to see how your site will look like. like there are a lot of uh, cases that your clients provide your translations very late in the process and you are going to go live and then you use your translations and you see that maybe a German word is this long and it doesn't fit on your, on, on your theme. So this is a cool way of, of checking them and, and having some uh, trans automatic translations for trying how it will look like. So our plan for the Lingotech module is we already have uh, uh, support for content entities. We are working on uh, translation, or on configuration translation support, which is already experimental. And we want to have a parity with the Drupal 7 version by the end of this year. So I have uh, some information about Lingotech, but you can ask me if you find me around. 
So that's it. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, about, uh, question about the admin area. Um, when you use open translation, you will have like three nodes in the admin area for editors. Um, I mainly use uh, active translation, but I don't like the, the way the, the admin area uh, shows uh, the content to the end user. Because there's only one node, and when they access uh, the admin area, for example, uh, in an English um, language, they, they only see one node. But the node could be translated in three languages, for example. Is this solved in Drupal 8? Yeah, actually, uh, at the moment, the default behavior is that if you go to your content uh, page, you have one node with four translations, you will see like four different nodes. Okay, that's good. So this is already solved by default. But if you want to have the opposite behavior, you can configure yeah. that. So More questions? Yeah, please. Yeah, but I don't know if you can demonstrate why you put a custom uh, <coughs> home page for every language. Yeah, I was about Supposing to your homepage is not a view, but yeah. about page, for instance, it's, an it's a bit of an issue in the same. So, f yeah. So for that, uh, you, you will need a, uh, so the thing is that this is not really translating your, your, uh, your configuration in terms of that it's not text but it's a value so this is not really support in terms of uh, configuring it in the interface but it's uh, it's really easy to solve with uh, config uh, with config uh, overrides so i guess that there will be a module which will mean will make this possible like I know already the domain module for having different domains in the same site already is already being worked on in Drupal 8, so I guess they already have a solution there which probably can be extracted for a language thing. More questions? So, thank you yes. for your time. That one, Mark. Do you really speak Hungarian? No. Oh. No. So, <coughs> most of the content of the side of the of the uh, slides were developed by Gabor Hoitzi. So, thanks for him for <coughs> for providing them for the community for spread the word about multilingual everywhere, and thanks for the sponsors of of the of Drupal Camp Leuven. So now, yeah, thanks.